large block sizes. Um, I think that this picture represents well what Foley's and allows us to somehow get done. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the movie Tetris recently. Anyone? Well, yeah, I think the 3D Tetris is one way to look at what Folios enables us to do at the block layer. If you think of it in small little pieces and you see the really small little blocks, then, then Folios allows us to address and work with large blocks, obviously, in a, in a very atomic way. That's the goal, at least. Um, so um, large block size efforts really is a, an example of standing on the shoulders of the giants. Um, Every time this comes up, every single LSFMM for what last last 16 years, I think, this has been you know tackled. Um, and the first patch set uh, was by Christoph Lemmer. Um, Dave Chinner worked on this too. Um, so it's certainly things that folks have been thinking about for years. Um, there is a, a wiki, and there's documentation there. Um, I don't need to provide you the link right now. You can just Google it. I think it's the first entry in Google right now. Um, let me know if that's not right. But um, an example for just technology shifts here is uh, the shift from 5.12 to 4K. Well, you know, uh, times change, right? We have different technology reasons for why we're considering embracing um, large blocks. But I'm not going to get into that because we have a lot to talk about. So I'm sorry for that. Um, XFS has supported large block sizes for many years, but that's not the context under which Christoph uh, Lameter first posted his, his patches for. If you look at the mailing list and the title of his uh, patches, it clearly says large block sizes, and then he goes on to explain how the goal is to support large block sizes, as in this, but when you're on lower page size. So yes, this was supported for years. And in fact, my understanding is that there were some products that were sold on power for years on XFS. But you needed a 64K system. Um, the goal, of course, is to support this on 4K. Um, this is, um, I use KDOPS, obviously, for my development. Um, and I provide four NVMe drives by default, so we skipped that. If you enable um, an, an experimental parameter for KDOPS, you will get uh, additional blocked devices with uh, each each one more of a power two. This represents the LBA formats that they support up to and the default that it's formatted. Um, you can query the LBA formats that are supported this way and you can format an NVMe drive this way as well. Um, yes, you can format the drive, you, yes, you can boot, but they won't work. And one of the things that was mentioned on the mailing list is that if you actually enable the large block devices for NVMe, your system crashes. So we started looking into that, and that's how you know we delved into this world. And uh, this is a status update of that, that effort, and a lot of the dialogue that's happened here. Um, there's a Git tree that I'm going to be moving forward, uh, trying to you know pick and cherry pick all these patches that po people post that might be related to help with large boxes. Um, there's also uh, support in KDOPS to do experiment with this as well, um, including pure IO map, which allows you to essentially boot into um, a world where you're just using uh, IO map with Christos patches, for instance, um, and you will essentially not use buffer heads at all. Um, you can test today large block sizes, then using NVMe with large block next, for instance. Um, you can also use it with BRD and TempFS. Um, so to answer your question, that, that, that support is, at least from a R&D perspective, of course there's further you know, R&D that needs to go for, forward and you know, further RFC and so forth. But there's a lot to talk about, so I'm going to move fast for this. Um, now let me show you guys uh, where we're at. Um, I like to try to keep track of stuff using OKRs. Um, some people are fans, some people hate them. Uh, I was actually going to address the folio conversion today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually the IO map stuff. So this is a small list, but this is actually a bit straightforward. I don't think this is really that complex. So let's get, get into the, the meat of this stuff. The IO map conversion, for those that are still tr struggling with that, uh, there's a session tomorrow to try to help document what the heck IO map is and how to convert file systems over. So um, if you go to Google and look for a large block size, just replace large block size for IO map. You'll see now, so hopefully, some sensible documentation or something coming close to sensible. 
Um, and um, so I, I'll mention a few things here. Um, Hannes's um, presentation kind of um, uh, did address, address you know, sunsetting buffer heads, but didn't address the block um, the device page cache. And it's important because, as people pointed out, it's it's used also for metadata I/O. Um, it's not clear if we'll ever get to a point where we're going to remove buffer heads, um, and that's that's fine because if you want to support large blocks of devices, there is a way out, and that's basically just to use I/O map. That means that if you're a file system and you do want to support large block devices, you likely do want to consider a solution for this. Otherwise, then you know uh, we will have file systems that do support large blocks of devices, and we will use a pure I/O map uh, path. It's going to take a while to get there, but there's I think a path. Um, there's a bit of the efforts here I, I'll um, describe. If folks have uh, interest in porting over stuff or uh, let me know, I just want to keep track of you know what how things are going. On the block layer, uh, Matthew's famous last words, we don't need anything on the block layer anymore. There's quite a bit of work there, uh, as we have ended up discovering. So um, I, I think we have agreed that we're only going to support uh, one order folio, I mean, or zero order folio on buffer heads, so that's not going to require any effort. I guess we can cross that out. Um, IO map, large block size support, it's a community effort. Um, so it's essentially, this will be moving forward. Uh, you would want to test a pure IO map path, right? So you want to build a kernel with that um, uh, buffer heads. Um, yeah, you can shoehorn in uh, IO map as well to a block device, but it's a bit hacky. You would have to do that yourself. Um, so let's see what else. Um, make buffer heads optional. So that's Christoph's patches, right? Um, Ritesh posted patches to improve performance as well. 16 times performance, apparently. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so there are considerations there to use um, IO map on 4K, for instance, on 64K page sizes. Um, and then there's all these other things, like for instance, one of the things, uh, hallway tracks that I uh, talked about with Christoph was essentially the complexities in block cache and all these mix and matches. Um, it seems that we probably should be moving the block size out of the super block, and because we already have the inode with the block size, so we should just use that. The other odd thing, though, is that you may end up in a situation where the block device cache has a super block with a block size, but different inodes have different block sizes. That's kind of odd. So to fix that, we should probably just have a super block per block device instead of having shared one. Right now, we have one shared uh, super block. Um, and eventually, the other thing, too, to try to help with read ahead um, and the page cache is to uh, this was Willy, I, Willy's idea, actually. So um, this was to uh, add the uh, page order requirements on the address. Um, what is it? The address address space. Um, I think uh, one of the things that we should review is the implications of, of going down some of these paths. And that is that essentially, if we want to support large block devices, we will have essentially an uh, IO map path. Um, file systems that do want to support large blocked devices will have to consider either a solution for uh, buffer heads or, you know, try to, you know, I don't know, um, come up with a library option, you know. It's, it's not clear to me. You would have a better idea on that. Yeah, so I think one of the things that wasn't clear to me, and I actually jumped back to the original topic proposal uh, to dry, try to get a sense for this, is uh, uh, just to take a step back, um, the topic proposal talked about how all the pressure is coming from the storage uh, vendors. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what's the business case rationale, right? You're asking for volunteers to do an awful lot of OKRs, and normally, you know, at least in corporate speak, when we talk about OKRs, we always have to talk about the business justification. Um, and I'm a little unclear on what are the use cases so, where we would want a 32K or 64K, uh, you know, uh, physical, a device with that kind of uh, physical or logical block size. Uh, and we kind of skipped over that part. So I don't, I don't use OKRs for business reasons. I use it for my own personal kernel development. I use it for everything that I maintain, including modules, the ZTL, and all that stuff, and it allows me to go backtrack and not go crazy about things that I think I forget about. So. I don't do it for a business reason. This is more of a community help and try to track things, you know, for the community. 
Uh, I'm not asking for volunteers for people to do things. I think that people are already doing some of these things. I'm trying to track what people are doing in consideration for a large block size support. Right, but um, many of us work for companies, and if I'm going to go to my company and ask them that you know some of the community who is working on company time should do some of these uh, individual projects. So think of it this is way. Is the justification because we need it for something else? No, no. Or think... what is the justification for supporting large block devices? Right? This is a dialogue. Why are we doing this? This is a dialogue. If you want, if you do have a reason to support large block devices, this is an outline of work could, that could, could just, be done. Could I just point out that yes. somebody representing cloud vendors yesterday said that a 16K block size would really help some of their workloads. So uh, what we said is that we need to support 16K um, database page sizes, so and we have outlined something that we can do in reasonable time that does not require us to use large block devices so because like, there's a cost-benefit profit justification for it, and I can't think of a reason why I should spend corporate time working on this. There's a simple answer to it, then don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. this is <laughs> yes. experimental. Yeah, and, and this is something that we think might be a good idea, which we think might be fast or even better in whatever for whatever reasoning for better. But this is something we simply wouldn't know until we tried. So all right, let me make it a bit clear. If you do only want 16K high order or aligned block device support for, even though your device is 4K, guess what, you're probably still gonna end up getting a, a large block device, just that it's painted in a different, you know, color. It's the same thing. <laughs> no, we don't need to do all the infrastructure development. No, no, no. Uh, just outline yes, all yes, these yes. OKRs, right? That's so this, I see like huge headcount requirements for this, and I'm trying to figure out how we justify the headcount. I think we're getting off the rails here. So like, let's, yeah. let's, let, let's talk about All right. what we're doing. Yeah, we're talking about business stuff. We can talk about that on the side. This is not about business. This is, if you do want large blocks of support, this is likely what you want to look into. Um, ancient file systems. Um, I mean, this is not just a large block uh, device support type of thing, right? You know, there's already dialogue on uh, removing riser FS. I don't, I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen, but it seems like what four years or something like that that we're saying to remove file system. There's dialogue also of uh, possibly moving old file systems to fuse. Um, there's complexities also in conversions of older file systems as well. So, for instance, I was uh, told that there are some file systems that we don't have MKFS utilities for them. So, testing that seems really complex, right? Because you can't really recreate those file systems unless you just get the image dump somehow. It's really limited. I'm not even sure why we ended up trying to support those file systems, but anyway. Um, if you have ideas on old file systems and progress on that, go ahead and look at the page cache. Um, this was the uh, stuff that I just mentioned earlier regarding the inode, address space using block bits. Um, and there's a link to Willie's comment on where that came from. Um, and then we have the higher order folio support. Um, rationale is, again, on the wiki. Just look at that. Um, memory comp compaction came came up. But um, in trying to talk to Velocity, it's not clear to me, really, if uh, there's anything that needs to be done there. Um, Willie, do you? Uh, as, as, as I remember, the uh, memory compaction code has not yet been converted from pages to folios. Um, I, I, I think it's more the allocation of, of fresh pages. So right now, I don't think it does very well at migrating pages from, at migrating non-zero order pages from one zone to another. I think that's just something that, that needs to get fixed. I haven't looked into that in any detail, but I, I, I do think it is a problem area because it's still working in terms of struct page. Once it's working in terms of struct folio, I will have delved deep into it. Or 
you know, somebody else did, right? Because I don't have to be the one who does that work. Um, okay, uh, one of the things that became evident to me, at least when doing experimentation with uh, Shemem or TempFS with higher order folio support was eventually uh, also addressing swap with higher order folios. Um, that's the swap uh, cluster read ahead, for instance, and, and friends. Um, there was a work also um, to evaluate um, Chinner's uh, effort to support larger uh, block sizes uh, when um, it's greater than the page size. And I essentially just tried to uh, rebase all that work. Um, and Chinner basically uh, ended up providing good feedback there. And it seems there was only two patches really needed there. Um, there's testing ongoing. First, I want to test that to ensure nothing breaks. Uh, make sure that there's a baseline there for at least for a, a four, uh, XFS on a 4K and drive with larger block sizes. Um, and if there's no issues there, and then hopefully try to see if we could promote getting that upstream. Once that's present upstream, then maybe we can evaluate testing XFS with large block size on a real block, large block device. Um, BRD, uh, Hannes has patches posted. It seems like he'll be following up on that. Um, and there's, uh, I'm not sure if other FOSS systems are interested in supporting larger blocks uh, sizes. Are there? So weirdly enough, we already do this by default for ButterFS for metadata only, because data is such a problem. Uh, but metadata, we default to 16K um, block size, basically. And so we just, and you can go up to 32, 64, or whatever. But like because cow is unfortunate sometimes, it's better for us to like do this in big 16K chunks. So like. You know, your default Fedora install has 16K metadata block sizes on 4K uh, page size. And How we'd love to do this for data as well. It's just data's trickier right now. Right, right. Okay, so it's it's not um, it's not on, on the roadmap right now, but at least meta, metadata certainly. Yeah, yeah, metadata's been there for years. Okay. It's been working well. Data is, we're doing IOMAP first, and then... Hopefully, IOMAP gives us everything we need to do. I had not considered uh, metadata requirements for uh, file systems. That, that that would be interesting, right? Because uh, right now, we do uh, the control for high order folios on the block size, right? And the question would be how to do that for file systems uh, for metadata. Yeah, this is where that, like, you know, metadata abstraction thing that we have. We just have, like, a, like an array of page pointers that we, we do. So like at the point that we can start allocating full 16K folios and just drop that in there instead of having like 4K things, that would be cool. But is the address space somehow used for metadata or not at all? Uh, we, that is uh, horrible what we do um, because we have a lot of metadata. We're not like ext4 or XFS. We have gigs of metadata and like you know hundreds of megs of metadata that we write out at any given time. Uh, so we have a fake inode with an address space that we hang everything off of, and then we just s set the AOPS to, like, nothing, and then we manage it all internally. Uh, if you remember a few, probably five or six years ago, I, like, wrote a bunch of code to um, do, like, byte size uh, throttling, so balanced dirty pages. This is the big problem that, and this is why we do it this way, is because with as much dirty metadata that we generate, uh, we can overwhelm the system and you know, uh, use too much memory. And so we need to rely on the balanced dirty pages. We didn't want to like redo all that work. So we use the inode to take advantage of balanced dirty pages. Um, and I tried to do this in a generic way and I just got distracted by higher priority things. Um, but that's why we do it. Got it, thanks. Yes. So to come back to Ted's business case thing, which is basically this looks like a lot of work, your Chinner thing, you said there were only two patches. I remember that patch said it was pretty huge. Yes. So is what you're saying that once we've done the folio conversion, actually what looks like 15 million man years of work will actually fall out to That's almost correct. nothing? That's correct. And that essentially, essentially your file system should be a lot easier to convert and to add support for a large block size support if you want that. One of the issues, of course, is the metadata stuff, right? And currently using buffer heads. Yeah, so. I, I think um, if Derek is on, he can talk about what work might be needed for XFS and... Uh, oh, I am on, Ted. Okay, because uh, I know you talked about this last week about supporting um, uh, pay, blo XFS block size larger than page size and 
Maybe you could comment on the XFS uh, metadata buffers or the XFS buffs that would be needed. Sure. So, as was previously touched on, XFS has its own buffer cache hidden inside of its code base, so we don't use address spaces or any of the strange things that ButterFS does with address spaces. So, as far as metadata goes, we already support having file system block size greater than page size. It works at least until memory fragmentation kills you. The only part that we that actually doesn't work right now is the part is the IO map part because we don't have a good way to tell the memory manager, hey, we want both multi-page folios and they have to be at least this size. Because right now all of the IO map code kind of assumes that the block size is always less than the page size, which we can keep true if we could have if we could require multi-page folios of say, you know, 8K for our 8K file system block size. So I think what Luis is talking about when he says that this huge grody patch set collapses to two is that I think all we really need, to, I think the only piece that's left is just making the, the uh, memory manager give us 8K say pages or 8K folios and then seeing what falls out of the system once memory fragmentation comes up and tries to eat us alive. Now, you know, Matthew has a has a theory that if everybody uses 8K in the system, then actually it will be fine and we'll just reclaim things as we do now. I suspect there probably are going to be other weird issues involving making it clear to the memory manager that if you want to reclaim part of this 8K folio, say, you have to reclaim all of it, not just one of the two pages. You can't really, basically you can't split large folios down to some anything smaller than whatever granularity we established in the first place. But the last time we act, anyone actually tried running XFS with 8K blocks on x86, obviously with the file data paths disabled, it worked fine other than, you know, toy, XFS became the toy file system where you can create directories and extended attributes all day, but you can't actually store it, read or write anything to a file. So I think as far as XFS goes, we're nearly there. We just need some things that uh, have traditionally raised eyebrows amongst the MM folks about, hey, are you got what kind of crack are you guys smoking? Hey, hey I just want to, I just wanted to touch on something you said there. Uh, when 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 the uh, MM is is reclaiming memory, um, it's always going to take an entire folio. So it's, uh, it's always going to reclaim an entire folio. So as long as the, 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 the tricky part is keeping the MM from fragmenting larger chunks of free space. So that, that, that's, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's where we need to do it. And uh, Johannes and Mel are currently arguing about a patch series uh, on Linux MM that, that will try to do somewhat better in terms of keeping um, large chunks of memory available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the answer is we really just have to stand up a test a bunch of test code to actually see what happens by, you know, make make the theoretically small changes to XFS, have somebody stand up MySQL or something on a, on a system with a ridiculously small amount of memory and see if it, see if the whole thing falls over any sooner than it does with 4K pages and 4K file system blocks. Right, it gets, it gets to the question of how to, how to determine that easily, you know, what sort of testing do we want to do? How do we detect that? How do we measure fragmentation, all that stuff? How do we replicate these sorts of, you know, dire situations that everyone is afraid of? How do we replicate that? How do we exacerbate that? You know, what do we do? What's our test plan? We got to really sit down and just carve that, carve that out. Um, and yeah, that's a uh, part of the next thing here is testing. Um, Basically, we want to get to the point of uh, um, testing first XFS on a baseline on 4K and drives with larger block sizes, right, without uh, 4K and drives. But then w what does it mean when you start enabling it on a, on a real large block device test? How do we stress that? How do we measure fragmentation? How do we cover these things? What metrics do we have available? You know, um, And this is part of a community dialogue, and this is why we're here. So maybe we can talk about that for those who are interested in lightning talks on the side and so forth. Um, 
but that's what I have. So, uh, questions? Uh, hey, Lewis, uh, this is Ritesh. Um, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so I, I, I do have a, a, you know, a, a point to discuss. So, is this the similar problem that, uh, I mean, like, should we have something like a multi-order block size? Like, for example, uh, the similar problem that, uh, you know, the memory management is, is, is facing with multi order folio. So, so, so what my point is, like, for, for data blocks, like, for example, in ehc 4 we have a big block where, um, where we can actually do, say, 16K blocks to be written, but for metadata, um, you know, can we still, um, uh, can we still have 4K, like, rather than supporting, um, you know. I haven't looked a, into a the 16. Block. K, you know, stuff from ext4. So I was referred to look at the YouTube video. So I will have to go do that. So Ted may be able to speak about that. I'm... Yeah, basically, like my point was, like, should we consider, uh, you know, having uh, different block sizes for different data types? Like, for example, if you have data, you can have, you can actually go and write a 16k. Whereas if you have, uh, you know, a metadata, it, it is better to basically track track that at a 4k granularity. Yeah, so the reason why ext4 did Big Alec, and we did this many, many years ago, was because the metadata problem was deemed too hard TM, and the MM fragmentation problem was considered too hard TM. And so Big Alec just simply allocated on disk um, chunks, uh, you know, chunks, uh, 16K chunks, but the assumption was the page cache could still be 4K and it would be fine. Um, in a folio world, it'd be really easy to have a 16 or 32K big alloc ext4 file system uh, if we had a way to tell the folio system, by the way, this is a you know, big alloc uh, 16K file system. All the folios should be 16K or larger. Um, it'd be really easy to do that, and we wouldn't change anything else because the fundamental metadata block size is still 4K, uh, and that would stay the same. So if what we're using in a folio world, um, this is actually pretty easy, um, the way ext4 did big alloc, and that was simply because we decided to solve the easiest parts of the problem first. We were not trying to solve the general case. Um, so, yeah. If my understanding is correct, then, then perhaps the same solution that would be used by TempFS might be leveraged by ext4, which is to eventually use the inode address space uh, for higher order folios. Um, but be a bit hacky, but you know, um, it's a different way to look at it. No? No? Then I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thanks, Peter. All right, thanks.